What is happening guys and welcome back to this episode of Redbeard's Garage. Today we're going to be working on a Yamaha G2 golf cart. This is an old school golf cart that was a gas golf cart to begin with and the guy has taken the engine off and wants me to put a Predator 420. Now, this is super simple on this golf cart because the engine swing arm is steel. You can weld up like a Go Power Sports engine plate if you wanted to. But we're going to be trying to put on the billet engine plate from Vegas Cart. We've got these dog bones so you don't have to miss. We're trying to put a nut on a bolt and stuff. They're super handy. We'll show you how those work. We also got a couple different belt sizes to, uh, to fit that golf cart. We don't know exactly how our setup's going to be. We may have to modify this engine plate because the customer is putting airbags on it. So he's wanting it to get as low as possible. This engine plate mounts in the factory spot. We may have to modify it to lay it down more. Uh, went to Go Power Sports and got us a 780 series CVT. We don't need a driven, we just need the drive because the driven's already a 780 style. So you can get these in the links below. All this stuff is linked. Vegas Carts also has this header that wraps around the engine, puts the exhaust in a safe place, but we're gonna be putting a motorcycle muffler because these are really quiet and really effective for horsepower. And onto the engine, the only thing we're gonna be doing is pulling off the air box, the muffler, and the gas tank because we need this engine to be as small as possible. So when we do that, we'll be using Go Power Sports air filter adapter, their air filter, and a performance jet. So make sure to check out the links to all this stuff. We can get the golf cart pulled in here, modify the engine, and get her slapped on. So let's get to it. That's pretty quick and easy. Yeah, very fast. So if you noticed in here, in this air box, it has this kind of uh, layout made into it. Well, the older engines had this little spacer and it's kind of like a rubber coated steel. I kept these from older engines and I like to run these because when you slide them on there, you see it leaves the holes in the carburetor. So if you don't have one of those, you might want to order one off Amazon. They're super cheap. Just buy it for a GX390. Now we can slide this air filter adapter on from Go Power Sports. And this piece right here is made to adjust out and hold your choke down. Because without it, your choke would come right off. So we can put the 210, use a 10 millimeter socket and put these two nuts back on. To hold the air filter on now that we have that spacer. And then we can tighten up the small nut or bolt that's on the back of this hold down. any dust that's laid in there we're going to leave the air filter off as of right now until we get the engine sitting down in there and then these go power sports kits you just slide on the air filter and you can get a pre-filter as well that we'll be running so it just pops on there we're not going to put that on just yet so once you get this adjusted out a, a 5 16 wrench will work you gotta if you have the choke on it's going to block the wrench from going on so turn the choke off you can tighten this puppy down and what this is going to do is keep it from that choke arm from coming off so now you can see our choke is held down and good to go all right now we can pull the bowl go ahead and jet up the carb so just take a flathead that's small enough to get in there milwaukee makes a good six piece screwdriver set and the smallest flathead is perfect for getting inside carbs really good set to have and there's our jet and the go power sports air filter comes with one now you may need to jet it up a little bit bigger because they can't adjust for every altitude but it's a general good size jet uh, for most applications now there is an emulsion tube in there don't let it fall out if it does just put it right back in we have jetted up our card make sure the o-ring doesn't fall out that meets the bowl to the carb or you'll have gas leaking issues. And it is jetted up. All right, so this is the factory key switch box. He's gutted the actual box off of it. But basically this line running up on top of the engine is your kill switch wire. 
So you're going to run that to whatever switch you're going to use to kill the engine when you ground this. Grounds out the ignition coil and kills it. Now you have this yellow line running into the block. This is the oil sensor. We unplug it. The oil sensor is just in case the engine falls on its side. It'll run out of oil in there and shut off. It's not telling you when oil is low or anything. It's basically going to shut the engine off, ground it out when that ball bearing in there grounds out. So we get rid of it and we can get rid of this little box. So that means we can unplug the black wire. That's a good one. So now this little box can be removed. You can cut this wire. Just know it can slide back in the block, but this one seems to be pretty good. So we're just going to cut her flush. Then you have this wire running out of this rubber grommet. This is from your charging coil. These don't have the craziest charging, the craziest output. They're probably like three amps. You can add a secondary coil and get six amps of charging, which of course is double. And then you have this line running up here to your to the spade connector. That's going to be your signal from your key switch to turn this solenoid on and start starting the engine. Now you have this bigger line running to the stud. This is constant hot, so this gets us hot straight to the battery. But of course, we're going to rewire all this so we don't need it. So we're going to take that nut off and remove. There's a lock nut behind it and a regular nut. Then we have removed that. So basically charging coil wire is your kill switch. Then you have your hot from your battery. It's constant. Then you have a, a signal wire from your key switch that tells this when to open, allowing power to run from this post to this post, which is wired directly up to the starter. We are going to leave the governor on this engine uh, because he just wants to keep it like it is. We might do some upgrades for him later. This is a brand new engine. It's just got some crusties on it from uh, sitting out in the weather on that golf cart. So she is brand new. Now we can pull the golf cart in and start fitting this engine onto the chassis. It is nice and clean. <laughs> Mold free. Okay. So Not a lot of room to work with, really. Well, he has made this engine plate here just to see. That's how low he needed it to set. Now, that billet engine plate, I believe, would set up about this high. There's some brackets that used to bolt here. But I don't think we're going to be able to use that because he wants this thing to drop as low as possible with the air ride he's putting on it. So we're going to take these motor mounts off. These old original worn out rubber motor mounts. Yeah. Whoa. So the Vegas car kit comes with these dog bones, they call them. And if you notice, they'll drop in perfectly tight. We had to dremel a little bit of the casting just from the rough lip on the top, but it sets just like that and it can't move side to side any. And then you have your bolts that'll go through the engine plate and thread right into this dog bone. So you don't have to have a wrench or anything up top, you just go with an impact down bottom. As long as you hold this down, you can zip it right up in there. That is genius. So we took this quarter inch piece of flat stock. We were going to basically set it under this engine plate, bolt it to the engine plate, and then weld it all the way, you know, we don't have to do it all the way across. Do one in the middle, one on each side, and then weld the ends, and that'll give us a support. We just want to use that old motor mount. That was just more complicated than it needed to be. Alright, engine is ready to go on. We only got the engine adapter thing tacked. So, oh. What did Caroline do, Helen? She's a crimson lady. Crimson lady. Lonnie took the skid plate out, which was a thin piece of metal, and uh, it was held in with a bunch of Illumini rivets. Illuminati? Mm mm, don't talk about that. So we have this rod right here, it's hitting the valve cover, so I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. Just snug it, Lonnie, don't, don't hammer jam it. Uh, it's got to come backwards for me to be able to put this bar here. There, that should work. Nope, too far. Alright, so the one belt didn't work. It was going to be way too short. This is, a, is an easy B01. Four seven. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Freaking lost, dude. 
Can't twist it no more. Well, that's still not lined up enough. Goes your way? Yeah. See, Am I hitting it's something? something? It's, it sounds like. Oh, it's that governor rod. That stupid thing. The governor's right. always holding us back. Why <laughs> they even invent those, stupid? Hey, come on. It's like brake pedals. What are they good for? Stopping fun. All right, so we pulled the shocks because he said with the airbags, basically this needs dropped all the way down. So slowly lower this. We're clear so far. Let's keep going. Clear so far. Keep going. I drop it till she won't drop no more. All right. Is that under the jack, basically? Jack I think that's what stopped is. No. Yeah. Yeah. So she's low. <laughs> He's putting bigger tires and wheels on this too, a lot bigger. So good luck. He's gonna have to modify the fuel trail then. Yeah, that is low. A little bit of rust. Uh but the engine clears perfectly fine. I mean nothing with that is a problem. So now we can start mocking up the exhaust. We've already cut the flange off and cleaned it up. And we're using the original exhaust that came with the kit, but since we've lowered this engine down, it hits the rear diff, the stock exhaust does. So that's why we're having to reclock it and then add on to the uh, existing exhaust. So, so we got the flange cut off. It was welded on like this. So we're gonna reclock it. You see my Sharpie mark? So I'm just gonna do a few tig tacks on this puppy. And then we can go mock it up and get this bin right. And then we're gonna have to do a real tight radius 90 probably a mandrel bent 90 i don't know yet so let's see let me get this welded on that was a crusty pig Good tack. Very nice. You got a new tool there, Gregory? Oh yeah. I know got it. He's got a, a little bit of a problem. This is half. The other half is over there. There's a couple things. We're using a couple on the cart. Oh, and then there it's a problem. Real addiction. Milwaukee, that other top tool is Milwaukee. Might as well open it for you. Oh, that's nice. This is nice. Not so easy. Their dividers are nice. It's sick opening it up and it's all perfect. Oh, yeah. That's the only reason I bought this. This is a family channel. The only reason I bought this fan was to do uh, headshots <laughs> for different agencies. It's like you're trying to be an actor? Nah, I just like headshots a lot. <laughs> Got a whole collection of them through the years. This, this is the only reason I bought this fan for when I pig weld stuff. I can yep. pull it down so we it can works. touch it. Yeah. It's weird it works. You're an idiot. No. I would never call you an idiot on camera. Yeah, but you get to edit it so you can just edit that out. That's true. <laughs> Ooh, ah, that's nice. Ooh, ah, ooh. Customer wants me to leave it open header because he's putting the airbags on it. And we, I would rather have the airbags on it so we can drop it down to see where I can put the muffler. So basically this is gonna be the straight pipe this is gonna have on it. We could slap an ROB on it just to quieten her down. And yeah. I think that would be worth doing. So he blaring around, but uh, we're gonna go test fit this now. If it works, we'll slap an ROB from Go Power Sport their little mufflers and they actually they're pretty quiet on a big block surprisingly but on a freaking 150 for some reason they're deathly loud ear piercing yeah horrible okay uh needs to be up more i think so yeah 
Let me put this on. Yeah, we gotta see what it looks like fully tightened. Yeah, it's low. It's pointing towards the uh, frame. swing arm. Hell oh boy! All right, so we'll adjust and. Uh, it's a good thing it's a fat <laughs> bead you put across there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like I put an inch long tack. So we got the exhaust all on. It goes back and shoots out the back. So if we come around here. You can see the muffler is firing towards the ground. So we're going to take it for a rip snot. <laughs> Choke these engines. They don't like even when they're fully warm. Yeah. They still don't want to start. Okay. Do you think it's gonna be better? Trick question. Yes. Yes, it will.
this is this is the moat. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't getting in there. No fish. Let's see. Will it ride a wheelie? Oh yeah. Huh? Let's see. It, it tried. It's trying. Well, I Or broke. Nothing's broke. Dude, that thing works extremely well. This is the best, the best golf cart we've uh, done so far. Simple. That is nice. It's cold out. Yeah. It's what, like 40? Uh, oh, well, the battery has shifted. Um, 36. Okay. Battery locked down again. We didn't make a battery. They're changing a ton of stuff. Like, once the airbags is on it, we'll get it back, redo the exhaust, because um, that ROV just blowing at the ground, and he's going to do dual batteries on it. But uh, thing's super sick, though. I mean, I like it a lot. That was a good time. It was way better than the... Uh, we did the Easy Go with the 440. This thing's way better. Like, yeah. suspension, handling the gearing. I like this. <laughs> that was fun. We need to call him and tell him, you got two options. <laughs> you roll this piece of crap off a cliff, you can sell it to me for pennies on the dollar. And those are your only two options. <laughs> like, well, what am I going to do? Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you the next time on this golf cart when we're doing the exhaust. It'll have airbags on it. We can't romp like we just did. That's the only bad thing about airbags. It's going to take all the drivability out of it, like for stuff like this. Yeah, it's only for asphalt, man. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, not ours. Not we'll ours. take it to the school and drift it. <laughs> 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 <It's all goofy. laughs> well we love you guys check out the links 
in the video description <laughs> i wasn't doing that i was gonna do that <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching make sure to check out all the links in the video description you can find everything we used on this golf cart go power sports has the pulleys uh they can also get you a belt if you was to contact them but we did the uh, performance kit we're going to be doing more performance kits and a mccuni from go power sports on the next episode of this golf cart so check them links out they do help us we love you guys and god bless even way off <laughs>